Hey, Harp Squad, I hope you're doing well. Uh, since the release of the sub button for affiliates on Twitch, I figure that making a tutorial video on how to make a Twitch emote for my fellow streamers friends uh, could possibly be helpful, so that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, I am Elvin. I'm a music streamer on Twitch where I play the harp and I sing opera. For those of you who would be interested in watching me live, I will provide a link to my channel in the description box down below. So before you even start thinking about the concept or the designs of your emote, what you really want to think about first will be the branding aspects of it. What that means is you really need to think about something or some elements that really can relate to your viewers. Uh, if you have something that tends to happen on every stream or an inside joke that you have or uh, the colors that you already have, try to brainstorm about it and try to include these elements. Once you've identified the repeating and strong elements of your stream, then you can think about starting the conception of the actual emotes and start sketching things out. Once you start really thinking and drawing some concepts, uh, which I usually do on paper, uh, what you really want to think about first is make sure that you use as much space as possible. The reason behind that is emotes are really small, so if you want them to be efficient, you need to take the whole space. Also, I really want everything to still fit in the box. I don't want to have like cut edges except for the bottom. When it comes to the colors, you want to choose some ideally very vibrant colors since the emote is going to be very small. Uh, it's important that we still can identify them and make sure that they are different enough from each other. Also think that if you're planning to get partnered eventually, you're going to have a lot of emotes to do. What that means in terms of colors is you want to have something that's going to be coherent. So try to think about a palette that you're going to want to use throughout a few other emotes also. When you block the colors, you really want to make sure that everything is really well filled. The reason behind that is when you're going to scale it down, some of the very minor details that you didn't think could have an impact on your drawing might make the emote less sharp. When it comes to the shading, what I would recommend is you go for a more cell shading kind of approach. Cell shading is when you really block the shadows and the lights so they are very very crisp. The reason why you might want to prefer to go for this kind of shading approach is that when you're going to scale it down, you're going to kind of lose the guardians. So make sure that the shadows and the lights are very sharp. Though nothing prevents you from adding guardians later on in the process to make it a little bit more pretty and a little bit more finished on full size. Once you're done with the emote and you need to export it, you're gonna have to resemble the image correctly for it to appear as sharp as possible once reduced. So the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go in image and then image size. Uh, you're gonna change the pixel dimensions, but then the thing that you really need to take attention to is the resample image. For best reduction, you're gonna wanna go for bicubic sharper. To import your emote on Twitch, you're gonna have to save it in three size. You're gonna need it in 28 by 28 pixels, 56 by 56 pixels, and 112 by 112 pixels. To upload them, you're gonna have to visit your dashboard and then the settings section. Then you can click on emoticons, which is gonna lead you to the actual uploading page. I really do hope that these tips helped you out get a better idea on how you can design your own emotes and all the technical aspects that are behind it. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.